God Almighty, Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our holy will and all his holy church. And may this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and to the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assume into heaven. May our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. And lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and homage, as the beginning and image of your church coming to perfection and a sign of sheer hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb seen from her own body. She marvelously brought forth your incarnate son, the author of life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a new form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you time, said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We we'll wait this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we seal the memory of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving time that you have hold us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake in the body and the blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed St. Joseph, Blessed Apostles, and all the saints 
to have this youth throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Thanksgiving for this moment in the life of the church, the assumption of Mary into heaven as queen of heaven and earth. At the Savior's command and for the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, Safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. And ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace to all of you. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God, Cordero de Dios, que quita el pecado del mundo, and happy are those who are called to this supper. Lord, I'm not worthy, should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And with the body and the blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And before the communion, stay in your place, we will go to you, okay? And those who are receiving by mouth, please raise your hand so we know one, two, three, four. Thank you. You will receive last. <laughs>
歌。And let us pray. <laughs> Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assume into heaven, we be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated again. Again, thank you for being here. It's so nice to see so many of you on this very hot day, but a beautiful morning, right? Yes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice Amen. and be glad, right? Yes. I'd like to welcome those who are here for the first time in many days and months and years. We welcome you. I know who you are. So thank you. And it's so glad that our chair, the chair of the pastoral council is here, and we're also the lecturers, Olga, and of course, thank you, uh, Derek, thank you so much, and of course to uh, our musical, uh, our music director, uh, Michael Chiu, and of course, the one and only, Kirsten. <laughs> We have the American Idol, she is the Christian Idol, <laughs> or St. Joseph Idol. And of course you noticed and you heard me say last Sunday that it's not a holiday of obligation. And it's confusing the Catholics, oh. right? Why? Why is today is not a holiday of obligation? Why? Because when it falls on Saturday or Monday, the church doesn't want us to, uh, to uh, what do you call this? To put too much. Uh, yeah. I mean, the church, I think they, they are so concerned about us coming to church on, and make it a holiday obligation. Because Sunday is always a holiday obligation. So that's why the church, that when it falls on Saturday and Sunday, I, and Monday, so any solemnity, like assumption, is not a holiday of obligation. Okay? You know that, right, Father? Well, I am not. Uh, I am old fashioned, Father. You are old fashioned. Old fashioned. The 15th of August always is a Saturday. A holiday, yeah. But 
it's not a waste of time to come to church. Okay. Right? Yes. Not at all. But the church said, you know, that we don't want to impose too much on the faithful. Okay? So, at every conference, every conference uh, in the world, in our church, they have their own, uh, they have their own rules. Okay? Like in Hawaii, there's only two holidays of obligation. Okay? So, in the United States, there are six. And in some other countries, so they can declare whether a holiday or the feast is a holiday or not. Yes. But for you, it's a holiday. <laughs> right? Yes. So, yes. are you with me? Yes. Just a little catechesis for you. <laughs> and by the way, the rosary, the rosary, the rosary is not about Mary. Mm. Did you know that? Uh -huh. Jesus. The rosary is Jesus. about Jesus. The history of Jesus. The life and the death <laughs> and resurrection of Jesus. Again, a little catechesis for you because so many, many Catholics say, oh, this is about Mary. No, the rosary is about the Paschal mystery, the life and the death life and, and resurrection. Okay. Again, before the final blessing, ex cathedra is from the chair of Peter. That's where he proclaimed the dogma. And who proclaimed the dogma? Who oh, proclaimed the dogma of the assumption? Pius the 12th on November 1st, 1950. But it was for Pius the 9th in, 18, uh, in 1870 that first declared the. No, no. 1870, Pius. Yeah. So Pope Pius the 9th first used this term. Okay, in 1870. Okay, so it's been with us, so it means without error. Okay, and the dogma is what is the dogma? It's the doctrine of the church with highest solemnity and authority. Okay? So, so anyone, anyone who does not believe in the dogma is condemn. Do you believe in the assumption? Yes. Or do you not believe in the assumption? <laughs> That's where I'm going. I was confused about the dogma. I thought you were... And the reason why I did not give communion because I didn't have a mask. You know that, Father. You know that? Oh, you're so smart. Of course. The Lord be with you. I mean, the peace of God is beyond all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. I'll see you tomorrow or tonight. May I offer for those who wish to pray.